This will be the most intense B-roll ever seen on YouTube, dude. We're we'll the loudest camera ever made. A thousand dollars, baby, and that's what you get. This is a follow-up to the Mint RF70. If you haven't seen the first original video, check it out. There's a link in the description below. That way you can get caught up. But I want to go over a couple of things with this, and I don't want to waste your time. Oh, no, no, no. That would be really, really bad. I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to tell you right now that this sucks. So if you came here to find out if you want to buy this, my recommendation would be to stay the heck away from it. And to remind you, this is not sponsored by Mint at all. <laughs> I paid for this out of my own pocket. This is a replacement camera that they sent me, but I had to send back the other one. And that was even kind of a weird situation. It kind of seemed like they weren't going to unless I was going to make this video, this follow-up video for you guys. Because they didn't like my first video, even though I sent it to them before I published it and I never heard from them. And then I published it, then I heard from them. <laughs> Anyway, if you want to stick around throughout the video, I will be going into way more in depth because I've traveled with this to um, many different places. I've even left the country with this camera. I've thoroughly tested this out, so I'm going to be giving you some in-depth, hopefully really, really informative information that can help you out and decide if you do want to buy one of these because there's so much that you need to know about this, it's stupid. Considering it should be an instant film camera, it should be pretty simple. But it's not. Ooh, gross. Put the thing away, man. I don't want anyone to see us with that. Going to uh, Disneyland. Yeah. I, will, I go to Canada. Yeah. I go to Toronto. I take it to Seattle, Washington. I take it to Astoria, Oregon. But every single time I would take it through TSA, my bag would get pulled. They would pull this camera and try and figure out what the heck it is because it would set something off in their scanners. Yeah, I even had TSA pull a pack of film out. So, you know, that's wasted one photo right off the top. That's something to keep in mind. Uh, you may have the money and you think because of the price tag, it's the best and greatest thing because this is a thousand, nearly, not quite, but nearly a thousand dollars. And then you have to add in the ND filters because you can't really shoot without it. I lost mine, by the way. Yeah. During my travels, they're somewhere here, I guess, but I don't know where they are. I have one ND filter that's still on the camera. It's an ND2, which is something, but yeah, I lost mine. This is way overpriced for what you get. I am completely obliterating any opportunity to continue to work with Mint. I have no problems necessarily with Mint themselves. It's great that they're still making something for instant photography in the year 2023. It's great. There's no reason for it to be this price uh, at all. And especially the quality that you're getting for that price, it's not there. Just the fact that the motor sounds like it's gonna explode every single time you shoot. That's it. There's no premiumness about this, unfortunately. It's just, it's just not. And plus the first one I got was broken. How frustrating is that? I paid for this. Remember, I bought this out of my own pocket. I, this is not sponsored in any way. I am just a customer. I'm just screwing myself from being sponsored by Mint. But that's what I'm here for. Knowledge. True transparency. That's my channel. That's what you're here for. So sit back. Enjoy. Unfiltered experience? Knowledge? I don't know. Let's get into it. I should have done that. This is a thousand dollar camera. I just got the replacement one from Mint. They sent this to me as a replacement for the other one, but I did still pay for it. Since I'm at Disneyland, I figured why not try and shoot some new photos. So let's hope for the best, because I was not happy the last time. Let's go. All right, in theory, got it. Listen to how well this sounds. All hell just broke loose. Oh, Mickey's out. The boss man. The last one I had. The light meter it wasn't working and so i was actually able to read the scene and actually get in theory a proper exposure the, it'll light up red if you're not perfectly exposed and if you're close or within range it will tell you which nd filter to put on it'll give you a number two four and a number eight or it'll just light up green and that just means you're good to go and so far so good that's one thing i like about insects we can see it right away You can, you must. Flip it right round. Yeah, you handed yeah, it to me that way. It's the boss lady. It's the boss lady. Shot the thingy with this hunk of junkie. Hunk can't hear it over the waves, but nice. 
I already ran into a problem today where the battery died, and now I don't know how much film's left in here. Because the stupid thing, if you close it, it doesn't turn the camera off. It still stays on, and I have to literally click it to off. But when I put it in like my bag, or just have it sitting around, it, it flicks back on because it's just a dial. And so the battery has died in this like three or four times. And they're double A's, they cost money. So, I hate this thing. So it's kind of funny. Two weeks ago, I was in LA. Now I'm in Canada with Daniel. Guess where I'm at? I had to. It literally just opened like like last week. <laughs> We're here for a job, and uh, I'm curious to see what the difference is. Let's go check it out. <laughs> Daniel's being kind and, and hanging on to the camera. Because I got one. So thank you, Daniel. Some more on the Stranger Things experience in the next coming months or so. Something really cool is going on with that and it's gonna be really fun. Can't wait to share it. Just another day at the office with Chris. We had a little mishap, but ignore that. Let's uh, get down to business. Whoa, on video everything looks sapia. That's it? Yeah. Oh, you're right, you have no color to you. There's no color. You'd think at f5.6 with 800 ISO, that's what the film is, at 60th of a second, that would have been pretty good. Dude, but. There's, there's no color. Dude, that's weird. <laughs> You're right, look at the outsides. Perfect exposure the whole time until I heard the click and I was like. I'm sick and tired of this freaking RF70. My god. Every time I try to use it, the batteries are dead. It's just super annoying. I freaking hate it. I don't know how much money I've spent just in battery replacement. And it resets the counter too, so I don't know how much freaking film is left in this stupid camera. And the reason is because this dial, you have to turn it to off. When you put it into a camera bag, it tends to spin the dial because it's not flush with the camera so it just drains the battery down to nothing you'd think it would turn off the you know power if you close it but it doesn't stupid so now it thinks it's at zero so it needs to shoot the dark slide out of this thing <sighs> it's so frustrating and I was having a major problem with the light mirroring yet again it wasn't reading things correctly the way it works is when you look through the viewfinder there's a little light on the bottom and it will light up red or green based on the scene it will tell you if it thinks it's in you know, proper exposure based on the settings that you chose. And then it will try to help you out. It will say if you're overexposed or underexposed. Now it will also tell you on the back of the LCD screen if you have the exposure right, but you may need to throw on an ND filter and it will tell you which ND filter to use, two, four, and eight. In my experience, if you're outside shooting on a nice day, you have to have the ND filter pack. It's a necessity. If you don't have this, you really can't shoot this <laughs> outside. I mean, you still can, but you kind of, this kind of defeats the purpose of having all these cool settings because you have to just throw it into F22 at 500th of a second. And even then it's still quite not fast enough. I mean, since this camera uses Instax wide film or just Instax film, cause there's now a square version of this, it's ISO is 800 or ASA 800. It's very, very sensitive to light, which is great for shooting out, you know, maybe at night or a low light situation. I think most of us aren't doing that. And if you want to shoot this, it's just not fast enough to shoot without an ND filter. This needs to be at least a 750th, if not a thousandth of a second minimum, just to be able to, to compensate for 
the film stock. Now, now for the shots, I'm wanting to rely on the camera. I wanted it to tell me what the exposure was within reason, of course, because sometimes you're in a situation where the sun is hitting from a spot and you're trying to shoot into the shadows. You have to use your own, you know, experience and and smarts to know what to expose. But majoritively, I was in a situation where I could allow the metering of the camera to take it full effect. And I want to see how it would do. And I gotta tell you, it did not do well at all. A lot of the times, especially when I was at Disneyland, I was able to adjust the shutter speed from like 125th to all the way up to 500th of a second. And it was still metering green on the little light on the back. That's a big difference in shutter speed. And Hey, this is Chris in the future shooting B-roll for this video and I want to cut in real quick because uh, I can actually demonstrate what I'm talking about. Right here is a little, little LED light. It'll light up green if the exposure is good to go or red saying no, it's not. I'm at 1 15th of a second right now on the shutter. Half pressing it, shows green, we're good to go. And now I'm going to move the dial to 1 8th of a second. Let's move to one fourth. I'm curious to see if it'll say over because it should. Nope, it still says it's good to go. So light, light meter on this is absolute trash. Uh, if you want to uh, get the best results, you're going to have to meter the scene yourself. You can get like a app for your phone that will sh that should do pretty good, or just get yourself a real light meter. But anyway, I wanted to show you that. Now back to your regular scheduled programming. So which one actually was it? So a lot of these photos. I got exposures, but the one of Goofy, it's actually slightly overexposed. It was promising for sure. This one came out really, really good. I thought it's a little bit dark in the shadows, but overall the blue in the sky, you can see some cloud detail. This is really good. I was really surprised. And then there's this one of the castle. That one did not come out at all. <laughs> Metering was incorrect. When I was on the road to Astoria, I shot this photo uh, and you can kind of see it in the corner. There's a radio shack there. Yeah, a little relic. And I got I got really, really excited just because this is a pretty damn good photo. Everything seems to be exposed just right. Highlights aren't completely blown out like at all. There's hardly any blowout. And yeah, it's really good. I was really excited. But then things got a little interesting. I went out to the shipwreck of Astoria and the metering on the camera was doing the same thing that it was doing in Disneyland where it was metering green and I adjust the shutter speed and it was still metering green. It was good to go. So I shot him at both exposures to see what would happen. And well, this is what I got. Leave a comment down below on which one you think is better, but kind of amazes me that the camera can do that. Cause you got one with the sky detail, superb. Like it's really, really good. And then yeah, but you can't really see too much other than just kind of a silhouette of the shipwreck. But then the second one, the sky detail is still there, but not as good, but you can see a lot more of the shipwreck. So it's really, I guess, the eye of the beholder there, but this was the exact same metering according to the camera, even though it was slightly different shutter speeds. But the reason I'm being so critical of shots like this, cause you're probably looking at it like, oh, it's instant photo, it looks great. But this is the type of photo that you would get out of a $20 instant camera. This is a thousand dollar camera. You should, you should be getting freaking stellar images. That's the biggest complaint that I have with this. That's why I'm being so critical. For the price you pay for what you get, it's not there, I don't see it. Inside, framing with this thing is a little tricky. You have to remember what focus zone you're in because there's two different areas to frame for, for what focus you're in. And I uh, miss framing on the Stranger Things logo. Uh, inside, I shot with a flash. I was a little far away. It's more user error on this one. More curious to see which is what would happen with it. And then this one came out pretty good. Uh, this was, yeah, one of the Surfer Boy Pizza. Pretty pleased. So in Seattle, it was an overcast day that day. So the photos are pretty much black and white. However, uh, I did get an even exposure, which I was really, really excited about. Was, this is one of the few times I actually got a photo. It was really promising. Now the barbecue. This one was interesting. I was using the ND filter to compensate for it based on what the metering said. And these are the results I got. Absolute trash. <laughs> uh, the one of this, uh, like Toyota, Honda. I don't know what they are. I know they're pretty popular. You can get them imported for pretty cheap. This little flatbed truck. Exposure is okay, but this thing looks brown. This was vivid red, like beautiful red. Uh, it did not capture that whatsoever. And that is because it's too dark. Uh, it's shot too fast. Uh, it didn't compensate correctly for the ND filter I had put on. And then the same thing with the other two. It just didn't compensate correctly for the ND, even though it said so on the metering. 
really, really freaking frustrating. So yeah, I don't recommend this. Uh, to wrap up, uh, that, that would be what I'd say. Unless you really, really want a challenge. I mean, I, I do. I like challenges, but this is just frustrating more than a challenge. Feels good when I get a good photo, but and then I just remember the um, sheer amount of cost that I had to pay to get that one good photo, which is far and in between. Just the price of how much I've had to spend on batteries for this thing, the film. Yeah, I'm good. Mint did send me a, a strap as a like a, hey, we're sorry. So that was nice. I would love to know your thoughts. Do you have this camera? Let me know what you think of it. Do you get good photos with it? Cause I don't. Maybe I got another dud. Maybe I've gotten two dud cameras in a row. I don't know, but I'm done with this camera. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Now get out there, make some art.